Welcome back, everyone. Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again for yet another Marvel Legends video. Man, oh man, do we got a big one for you today. Now, as of this past Tuesday, my FedEx app goes, hey, guess what? There's a 10-pound package come from Hasbro, and it's probably going to be your giant-sized giant man from the Hasbro HasLab. This was the 2023 offering. And the box is really nice. It's a huge, huge box. It's got really nice artwork of the Avengers, people in windows screaming, yelling. You got the Wasp, which she looks great. And of course, front and center, right at the top, you got Hank Pym, the Giant Man. And I love that it says Giant Size Avengers. And that's just really nice. It's very cool. It's like a little mix of old and new, especially with the little box right there on the side. On the top of the box, it says Avengers 60 Years of Earth's Mightiest. And I love the artwork on the sides. Exactly the same top to bottom. On the back side shows the same exact sort of city drop of New York City. You'll see lots of Ultron robots strewn about. Garbage. Trash. Looks like they're going to need to call damage control to kind of fix this place up. But it can be used as a backdrop for your giant man if you so choose. And I would say that that's a nice little touch if you want to keep the box. But in the meantime, you want to see what's inside the box. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new, the Hasbro 2023 HasLab for 2024. Your giant size giant man from the Marvel Legends Avengers line. And of course, just before we get started, I want to say thank you to everyone who tuned into my YouTube channel all throughout New York Comic Con. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Why? Old toys, new toys, daily news updates, guarantee you'll find something here that you like, including this sucker, but more on that in just a few. Because... We're going to take a look at all the various contents of the box, like this giant, giant man body, which is essentially just a giant Marvel Legends action figure. So just keep that in mind. There isn't too much in the box, which I'm going to say is good because a lot of it is you pick one expression, you pick one set of eyes, you pick one thing, and that's what goes on top of the neck of this giant man. You're going to put it all in storage anyways. You're not going to swap it out. I'm not, definitely. In fact, there's really one head portrait of why I ended up going and getting this Giant Man. Because I still like my Toy Biz Giant Man. Because I felt like, yeah, that's the appropriate size of a Giant Man. This is, in fact, a Giant Giant Man. You got several faceplates. You got antennae. And then, of course, you got a couple sets of eyes, and then you got the main contraption right here for the head. So this is the main part of the head. This is what gets you going, what fits into the mask, which houses the eyes, houses the face plates. It's just the basis of everything that you're going to need to customize, quote unquote, your giant man. Now, for the mask, the helmets. It's just one big open air piece of which you're going to combine all of these various pieces. I really like the design of these little rectangle things on the side of his head. And it is very textured. It's kind of like a McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse figure. But I think in this sense, think of it this way. If you have a giant Marvel Legends figure, of course, you're going to want to see all the detail that makes up Hank Pym's costume. So I'm right there with you. Otherwise... It would look kind of chintzy if it was just completely smooth. I, I get you. Except for this seam, which is and isn't noticeable. I wish it wasn't there. Is it there at all angles? No, especially from the front. I just wish they maybe could have done something about that just to kind of make it a little bit more flush. But yes, all the various portholes. The mask is quite soft in many areas, but very sturdy at the same time. In terms of the various face plates, this one is largely just going to be the neutral face. And it's painted well. You got the lips, you got nice shading. Of course, the eyes, of which, yes, you can choose your own eye adventure from the four that we got. You can see all the various portholes that plug into the front of this face. It's pretty cool. It's very different. I like the different technology that they got going on with this Marvel Legends Giant Man. This one, and, and I'm going to tell you something. A lot of these face plates are 
kind of creepy, if I'm being honest. Some look good and some are like, especially this smiling one. It's just, it puts off a various vibe of like uneasiness instead of being like, oh, look, he's cheerful. He's done a good job and saved Earth again. This one, again, largely what I'm talking about. This is more of his grit in his teeth. He's snarling. He's getting ready for battle. Maybe he just looks like an angry giant man for better or for worse, which kind of leans more towards the, yeah, I don't know about this one either. This one, as I'll reiterate, I'm glad they got to this tier because this is what I was looking forward to. In fact, I didn't back it until they hit the zombie pieces. I love what they got going on here. I love the colors. Now, they've kind of taken upon themselves. It's kind of a mix of the new Marvel zombies as opposed to the original comic book run of that, the miniseries, which is fine with me. I'm just happy to add more Marvel zombies to my Marvel Zombies collection. Get ready for that at the very end of this video. The teeth and everything else, I just wish that they could have made the jaw movable to kind of go, you know, that kind of thing, or maybe bite the head off Wasp. That would have been awesome. I would have loved if you could have done that. You get these wild eyes. That's where I'm talking about with this new kind of tech. They're kind of showing off. Like, hey, look what we can do. We can kind of swoop, swap and do things that are different from a standard Marvel Legends release. So these are more so straightforward eyes. You can't rotate it. It's really just one way on, one way off. You can't flip the eyes over and kind of have a different direction, but they simply just peg in just like that, of which you then choose a faceplate, slip it on over the eyes, and boom, there you go. You see what I mean with the <laughs> with the creepiness factor on this one? It's kind of like, yeah, when you, you kind of get it all ready to go with the rest of the mask, the helmet, and everything else. I mean, it looks a little bit better, but this is overall kind of disturbing in many ways it's kind of like the itchy and scratchy land episode where they pull the face off and it screams i think of that every time i've swapped out these eyes these ones are going to kind of do the mcfarland side eye in many ways although it's kind of looking more up top you can kind of see how again you can't flip flop these any which way it's one way on and one way off but I kind of like how the eyes are looking up. Maybe he's looking at an impending enemy, something like that. And I like that you get various eyes to choose from, most of which are pretty cool in many ways, and they can be used with the zombie head, just saying. But then you have, again, more of that McFarlane side eye, so he's kind of looking off completely in the other direction, and you simply just pop those on, and by now, you kind of get the idea. But again, some of the eyes work better with some of the facial expressions and vice versa. You'll totally get it once you get yours in hand, and it's all about your own personal taste. But for me, I think that the more snarling head portrait that one's a little <laughs> it's a little intense but then you have these these are more of a yellow glazed over glossy cataract sort of eyes with a little bit of red we'll say bloody eye maybe something like that i bet you can guess yeah which head portrait this mainly goes for so you got the zombie eyes and i totally dig that i think that that looks pretty cool and like i said if you want to use the other eyes, of course, you can totally do that. Sometimes the eyes get stuck in there. I also just kind of cut out some white strips of paper for now just to kind of see how that would look for a completely whited out eye because in the Robert Kirkman Marvel Zombies comic book, they just all had white eyes. Kind of like that too. I might keep that in there for now as well. You also get some antennae for old giant man. So you get the standard white ones, which look pretty cool. And that would be what I kind of think about with giant man. Yes, he goes from white to black, that kind of dealio. You can just simply peg them into the front of his giant giant man helmets. You can have them going any which way. They will port into both sides, so there really isn't any right or wrong answer with how you'd like to display these. You also get a pair of black antennae, which are going to do the exact same thing as the white ones. Go figure. But just keep in mind, these aren't very fragile, but they're not meant to be forced or stressed in any way. I wouldn't recommend 
doing that. But there definitely won't be any bowing over time. And then, of course, you get a second pair of black antennae, but this time around, they're all roughed up. They're all torn. They got a little paint to them. This is for the Marvel Zombies Giant Man, of course. Now, in the original Robert Kirkman storyline, he had white antenna, but then again, the costume was also different. He had white gloves. It's sort of like... They picked various parts and pieces, various iterations of the Marvel zombies, but in many ways, yes, you could make a really cool zombie giant man. Now, we are going to grab some eyes here. We'll just pick some random kind of looking down sort of deal and then grab a faceplate just like so, and I'll show you exactly how to then incorporate the other half of the mask. So you kind of want to slip it in just like that. That's how I found it to be the easiest for me, and that looks pretty cool. If you want to take it out, make sure the sides right here, which kind of fold into the sides of the various face plates, that way it kind of clips in and stays nice and taut in there so it's not uneven, it's not folding off to the side. And then you also have to undo those when you want to pull the head out, which I found can be kind of a learning curve, but it kind of just folds in, folds out basically just like that. I wish they kind of had a little notch underneath where you could kind of slip your finger and kind of pull it out, but lo and behold, no. That, that, that did not happen, unfortunately. But yeah, there you go. There is your giant man head portrait, and we'll go ahead and pop in all the various antennae so you can see what it looks like. So again, you can kind of go either which way. You can have the antennae kind of jutting out to the side, just like that, which does look pretty cool. Or you can swip swap them and have the antennae kind of folding in. That looks great as well. Like I said, the amount of various looks that can be achieved with this giant man is pretty cool. There's really no right or wrong answer, especially with the black antennae. Same exact deal, same exact look. You can have them kind of curling out. You can have them curling in. You get the idea at this point. But I'm happy to say that even though I'm not totally sold on all the various faceplates, I knew what was coming in the box, but not all of them looked the best. But then again, yes, the zombie one, I think, looks the best. Of course, right? You saw the thumbnail. It's the Marvel Zombies Giant Man. He looks awesome. So in that sense, sure, you got the... Glossy eyes, you got the antennae, of which you can then kind of fold off to the side. And just to kind of show you, yes, with those specific black ones that are all disheveled, like I said, you can have them fold it down, fold it over, just have him looking like a mess as a Marvel zombie would. But let's do this now. Let's just pick this faceplate, these eyes, white antenna, and we're going to get this going. The head is actually... Pretty hefty, I will say, in and of itself. You see right here that this is where this giant neck contraption is going to just plug in. It snaps down, which is nice. And yes, there you, go. you know what? <laughs> this is what I mean. This faceplate with the eyes, with the smile, he looks terrifying. That that's let's go with this one right there. That is a faceplate I will probably never use. <laughs> It's only going to be probably the Marvel Zombies one, but you get the idea. Texture for days. His big black harness right there. Very cool. All of it looks different. All the various parts of his costume looks great. From the head portrait, you see the seams of the costume that run all the way down to the neck until it hits the shoulders. The backside, all the musculature, all the folds of the costume... It's just amplified from a six-inch Marvel Legend to now the size of a house. So you get the idea there. I like all the folds. I like how it kind of rounds out by the elbows. He's completely pinless. Again, going into the gloves. And you get a little bit more stitching, and it kind of looks like a pair of blue jeans. And I kind of dig that. I like that about this extra detail of which you would see a lot more of with something so enlarged. You can kind of see how all of that various stitching exists within the gloves, around the fingers and whatnot. The belt is nice. That's fairly simplistic. You have his trunks, which kind of have these designated lines within the folds. That's a nice little breakup of the blues down to the legs. And then once again, down to the boots, which have really nice texture. You got some nice paint, a little bit of shading to it. You got the black soles. I like right there on the top. 
You get, again, little black shading brings it to life. It's not overly done. But one thing on the back I will point out, you see all the various stitching for all the little angles of the boots. But then you have some zipper action. And no, I don't want these zippers to be painted because they should be blue. It should meld with the costume. And I just think that that is kind of cool. I like that a whole heck of a lot. If you're going to put in detail, at least make it make sense. Of course, when you put on some boots, you're going to want to zipper them up. So yes, for me, as far as the texture goes, definitely dig it on this figure. In terms of the articulation, the heffiness, this guy is heavy. And he also has ratcheted joints, which you can clearly hear on everything. They learned from the Sentinel. We all remember that. Plenty of articulation in the feet. You got toe articulation. He does have some peg holes on the bottom. So if you want to stand him up via that way, you can find a stand big enough. Sure, why not? To the knees, pinless, double jointed, ratcheted as all holy heck. Nothing is overly stuck, but I like the fact that I know this guy is not going to take a tumble or take a fall. He has some upper thigh swivel right there at the shorts. I like that that's cut in nice and neat. The legs will kick out only so high they'll go off to the side plenty of articulation there ratcheting but very stiff and kind of like a subtle click again the arms are sturdy the elbows everything else when you have the double joints the biceps swivel it's all there it's all working very nicely i'm happy with it overall even the elbows when you fold it in like that that looks pretty good the one gripe that i have and i'm going to tell you why because i don't want to move every single digit on this hand of which there are three on each finger so if you want to do a fisted hand which just to kind of point this out it has the old toy biz fists where it doesn't exactly close close like as opposed to having swap out actual hands that kind of thing so that is a gripe in and of itself to me I'm being lazy. I'm the old man yelling at clouds. It's just, I would prefer swap out hands. I knew going in that every single digit would be articulated. Yes, of course. But unlike, let's say, Galactus or the Sentinel, these ones are a little bit stuck right out the box, so go very easy on them. Once I started to move them around, it's not like they became loose. It's just more so the fact of, you just kind of have to get it going in order to hold characters, which he can hold characters. He can hold items. It's all there. It's just not ideal for me. He's got the upper diaphragm. You got the waist. He's had a nice ab crunch to him. The black harness does not get in the way. That's all well and good. And then to look at the head portrait, of which I would have to move the camera around 50 million times for us to do this. Yes. That is ratcheted as well. It's very secure. Up, down, left, right. Plenty of momentum. He's got butterflies in the shoulders. It all works great. I am, again, minus the hands, because that's my gripe, very happy with the articulation. Now, to kind of show you the height differentiation between Galactus and Giant Man. Let's see who's going to stop first here as we continue up up oh, it's obviously going to be giant man galactus is a lot heavier a lot more detailed out lots more parts and pieces and that's why he was more expensive you have a very simplistic very detailed out giant man but galactus definitely takes the cake to go from old-fashioned old-school toy biz giant man to now see everything that we got with this giant giant man well, I still like the Toy Biz one. I think it's got a spectacular head portrait. I like the body type. I like the simplicity. I like the old school nature of this giant man. So this will always be the giant man that I love. And then you got the new Marvel Legends giant man and the Ant-Man, both of which are Hank Pym. Those are cool. Nice costumes. Nice bright red. The arms on the smaller giant man are definitely weird. And don't even get me started on the lab coat. It looks like he stayed over at someone's house and was wearing their shirt while making breakfast. I wouldn't call that a lab coat for Hank Pym. It needs to be a lot longer. And then to kind of comment on the third and final tier that we never reached with this Has Lab, it was supposed to be a scroll giant man. Well, I already have that. I'm not too upset that we didn't reach that. Although for those of you saying like, oh, well, Hasbro should have thrown it in anyways. Yeah, that would have been awesome. But we know they're not going to do that. We know that they're not going to do that. That would net them so many brownie points. 
but they're not gonna do that. And that is why we only hit the first couple tiers, and that's why we got exactly what is in this giant man box. But overall, to see what has come before, and I knew going into this that this is a giant figure. It's, it's a little bit too big for what I think about with giant man, but for me and why I got it, well, that's coming up very shortly. Now, this is obviously going to be the money shot. This is where the grit and teeth and those specific eyes come into play. Because if you have been collecting Marvel Legends thus far, and you've been doing it for quite some time like myself, you've obviously amassed the Avengers. You got to have them in some way, some form, whatever costume they're wearing, from Thor to then the Wasp, Black Widow, Captain America, Hawkeye, Iron Man, the Hulk, and then of course you got Hank Pym. That looks awesome. But well, that looks great. And we're going to end on this note right here. This is why I wanted this. And when they revealed the tier of the Marvel Zombies faceplate, the antenna, and everything else, and then you finally reach that tier, I was like, all right, I'm in. Because this is what I ultimately wanted this Giant Man for. I'm sticking with the Toy Biz one. I like that. That's an appropriately sized Giant Man. But in Marvel Zombies... He was a son of a gun, he was huge, and that's why it fits better, methinks, with my Marvel Zombies line. So to go through all the characters, heck, all the Diamond Selects, and then you can throw in the Iron Man and the Scarlet Witch from the Marvel Legends Disney Plus line, if you so choose. They're not going to exactly fit, but I've told Diamond Select over and over, and I've asked them, please make more Marvel Zombies if you can, because you did it right. These are terrifying they're creepy they're unsettling and there was a long period of time where disney when they bought the whole marvel license was like we're not going to make marvel zombies no more you can go and watch my video i have that on youtube right now but here we are after all these years this sucker this is what i wanted this looks amazing it showed up just in time for halloween and i loves it so while there is some nitpicks for me for this giant man Largely overall, it's a home run in terms of what I wanted for the Marvel Zombies line. Very happy. You've heard my thoughts. I'm curious to know yours. We could talk about this all day if you like down in the comments. But thank you very much for watching. I'm going to leave you guys with that. I will talk to you guys soon. Adios.